Today we are building and installing some built-in tower cabinets in the corners of this alcove. Hey guys, how's it going? So I said in the last video, which you can check out up here, that this portion of Danielle's plant and crochet room will be put on hold for a while. That was a lie. Long story short, the scope of the concurrent office renovation has grown quite a bit, by choice, not necessity, and we've redirected efforts back into this room to get it wrapped up since it'll be a while before Danielle and I are back at our actual desks. Basically, in this video, we are going to be focusing on the two tower cabinets in this alcove that was created back when we built the closet for the front door, which you can check out in this playlist up here if you are interested. To start this project off, we had to clear out some space to work, which was a little bit of a pain since half of the office was currently stored in the corner that we needed to work in. I had to rig up a temporary grow light off the shower curtain rod and half of Danielle's plant spent a week in the bathtub. With all of the furniture out of the way, I can begin carefully pulling off all of the baseboards and crown molding in the work area. I'm going to reuse as much of this as I can. I like to use a knife first and run it in between the wall and baseboards as much as possible to cut the caulking to make pulling the boards off as clean as I can. It prevents tearing the drywall and paper and is just cleaner overall. I can come back after and scrape any remaining caulk off the wall. Any nails left behind just get knocked all the way into the wall as they aren't going to be hurting anything. Whoever it is that ends up reclaiming the lumber out of my house in 100 years, sorry if I chipped your rodinium tipped blades. Cast rodinium. This is the hardest substance known to our science. With the baseboards and crown molding removed, I Danielle proofed the corners and carpeting so that she could get the wall painted in the accent color that she wanted. And to her credit, I only had to touch up a couple small areas. We figured this one was a pretty low stakes experiment for Danielle to learn how to paint properly. Even though she's not because you know there's tape. Hey. You don't need tape if you're good at it. Can't be good at it if no one ever lets you try. Well, just get good. Story time. I was inv invited to help paint a house exactly one time. No one told me anything. You just threw me in a room with a brush. I was never asked back again. That is not my fault. <laughs> While Danielle was working on that, I snuck out to the shop and started working on the cabinets. Starting with unloading the prefabbed MDF and melamine pieces out of the car. These will be the bulk of the cabinets. With the car unloaded, I morph my workbench into crosscut mode and start cutting the pre-made MDF shelving into pieces. I measure the length required for the interior of the cabinet. I offset the measurement to account for the base width of my circular saw, line up the speed square, and cut the shelf to length and repeat that process for the three shelf pieces I picked up. I decided to go with the pre-finished MDF in order to save some time. It was already painted and the cut sides will be covered by the cabinet sides anyways, so I didn't have to worry about it. And they already had the rounded front to the shelf that the rest of the shelves in the closet already had. So they worked out. With the shelving all cut to length, I moved on to the sides of the cabinet. We decided to go with these pre-drilled melamine sheets for the sides of the cabinets, much for the same reason as the MDF shelves. Going this route probably shaved four days or so off the total length of the project since I really didn't have to paint anything other than the wall. And since the panels were pre-drilled, it meant I didn't need to spend an hour or two drilling the 568 holes I would have needed otherwise. The downside here is that I couldn't guarantee that the panels would 100% line up. The issue I'm having is that this sheet and this sheet aren't quite lined up with each other. So my solution is, since everything is drilled the same distance, I'm putting a pin in somewhere toward the end. I got the two pieces kind of just on top of each other. And I'm just gonna line up the two holes. Come on. Drop it down so the two shelves are now lined up, the pins are aligned. I'll flush up the corner down there just so that the front is lined up. But this is why I'm doing that. 
Now I know that the pins here are perfectly aligned. I can cut two inches off the bottom here, cut it the final length on that side, and the pins will be perfectly aligned all the way through. And I already did that on this one, so I know it works. With the majority of the pieces cut to their final lengths, I break out my pocket hole jig and drill some pocket holes into the top and bottom panels, which are just offcuts of the fifth melamine panel and center shelves, which will be the one permanent shelf in the cabinets, just to give the cabinet a little bit more stability. With the pocket holes drilled, it's time for assembly. The top and bottom panels were pretty easy to install. Just line up the panel onto the side's edge, clamp it down, and screw it down. The center shelf was a little bit more complicated, however. Not enough hands available. So, uh, the center was a bit floppy still, so I'm bolting this shelf permanently into place. So I measured 48 inches from there, set my squares up, so uh, 48 inches on both sides, these are right at there. Butt the shelf up to the two squares. I got it lined up with the back here, clamped in at the bottom, clamped in at the top, so this isn't going anywhere. So now I can just screw it in, screw it in, screw it in, screw it in, and shelf is permanently in place and we're good to go. With the majority of the cabinets completed, I can move them into the house to get them out of my way, which was fun. We'll go with fun. Now that the cabinets and the cabinet materials are out of my way, I can start working on the base of the cabinets. I just went with a quick box out of 2x4s that were a half inch smaller in both directions than the footprint of the cabinet. It's going to be covered by either the wall, cabinet, or baseboards anyway, so it doesn't need to be pretty, and it raises the top of the bottom panel to the same height as the top of the baseboards that I'm going to be using, so it just works out. Back in the house now, before I can bolt the cabinets to the walls, I have to modify the one cabinet, going into the right corner. Back when I built the front closet, I needed to add this junction box to avoid doing a lot of rewiring, and unfortunately the cabinet will be covering it up as is. Though this is pretty easily fixed with some measuring, marking, jigsawing, and then throwing on some edge banding. Mounting the cabinets into place was a little bit of an ordeal. Basically, once I mounted the base to the cabinet, I could finally sit it into place, make sure it was level and square, which I took care of with some cedar shims under the base. Maybe I should have cut the carpet under the cabinets out. It would have allowed the cabinets to sit directly onto the subfloor, but I didn't, and it's done now, so whatever. Once the cabinets were square and level enough for me, I can screw them into the wall with some small L brackets. Since corners in drywall are always filled with plaster, I couldn't have the cabinet installed while touching both the back and side walls at the same time, so I opted to back them fully into the back wall and fill in the gap along the sides. Using some non-moldy baseboard I pulled from the office project, I tried to scribe a piece off of it and cut a custom fitting piece to fill the gap. That didn't work for me and I ended up snapping quite a few pieces trying to move them into the house and was just done with it at this point. So I gave up on that and ran a couple pieces through the table saw just for the bulk fill and I can do the rest of the fill with some caulking. Once I had the fill piece where I wanted it, I tacked it in with a couple pin nails. Moving on to the top gap, similar story. Using some melamine strips, I filled in the gap between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. Securing it into plates with some pin nails from underneath and another small L bracket which will be covered up by the crown molding. I would have liked to have put the L bracket on the back side, however I didn't have a long enough bit or enough room to fit my hand and the drill in between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. And again, any gaps up here will be smoothed over with some caulk. With the gaps filled, I can start on the crown molding and the baseboards, which was pretty straightforward. Lots of cutting miters, swearing because I cut the miters backwards, 
recutting the miters, nailing the piece up, going to install the next piece, and realizing that the previous piece was slightly too long, pulling the previous piece back off to shorten it, reinstalling it, installing the new one, and finally making progress. You know, normal things. The next day I come back through and fill all of the gaps with some paintable caulking. A couple days after that, once the caulking was dry, Danielle loaded up the cabinets with shelving and yarn, and I came back through and touched up the purple paint after I smeared caulking all over it. I'm not going to worry about the beige paint at this point, since Danielle is still using the other half of this room as her office while the main office is out of commission, and I'll need to touch up the beige paint once she moves back out anyway. So it can wait until then. And with that, this project is done. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this project. It gives us the same volume of storage as the IKEA Calyx cubes we had set up before, but in a much more appealing and space fitting sense. There's a couple cock spots I'm not 100% happy with, but nothing I can't live with. And once everything is all said and done, it looks really good. We are still going to be setting up and installing a greenhouse cabinet in this cavity but that will be a standalone video since we are going to go in depth on that build. Danielle has looked at quite a few setup videos and has expressed frustration about some of the gaps in information in those ones, so hopefully we can fill some of those. If that video is out by now, you can check that out up here as well. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at John the Shriner. Otherwise, I will see you here in the next video, and have a good one. Are you even recording right now? Yeah. Where is it? It's right fucking there. Oh. The camera on the tripod. I didn't look over there at all. Mm. It's my banana. Okay. Remind me never to go to you for a massage. Hmm? Remind me never to go to you for a massage. Because I'll hit you with a hammer. <laughs> it's a good reason not to go. <laughs> you need a massage. Bang! There, you would know better. Okay, yeah, why are you being stubborn? I had you in there already. So you just hit her to be a bunch. <laughs> Behavior will happen more! I'm hitting the corner to mush it down. Listen up. here, Wood! Shut up. I'm hitting the corner here so it stops catching on whatever it's catching on over here. But you can see how that looks, right? <laughs> yes. I have reasons. You just take it out, whack it a few times, do better! Do better, Wood! Jonathan, is that how you were raised? Maybe. Do you, do you need to talk to somebody? Not right now, I'm good. That isn't the most clean join there, but it's a shit. Work. Fuck off. Do it yourself. I can't. Exactly. I'm tired from scrubbing Susan. Well, she wasn't so goddamn lazy. She's fucking dirty, the bitch. Dirty and lazy. Dirty, lazy whore. Fucking Susan. This is going to be fun to clean up potty go with. What? Oh. <laughs>